Um, with that, we have uh, our, for our next presentation, um, a student group that, um, that is made up of students from um, UCR, Preston Reed, Holly Chi from uh, CSUSB, and Shang Tan, who's with the um, planning and civil engineering program over at Cal Poly Pomona. And they've been looking at um, big data and equity within the transit, the transit system. And so Preston, Holly, Shang, um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Collins. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us here as part of the dialogue series this morning. We're excited to share with you the, re the research that we've been doing and how we've been using big data in order to quantify public transit equity. First, we'll do a brief introduction um, of our team, starting with my colleague, Preston. Hi, guys. I'm Preston Reed. Um, I'm a computer science major, um, getting my MS at University of California, Riverside, and I'm actually graduating this June. I'm Holly Shea, and I'm an MBA student at California State University, focusing on business intelligence, and I'll be graduating in December. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shin Tan. I'm a civil engineering major with emphasis on geospatial engineering, a fourth year undergrad student at Cal Poly Pomona. I'm also actually graduating this spring semester. And our faculty advisors are Dr. Zhang from Cal Poly Pomona, Dr. Ho from CSUSB, Dr. Collins from CSUSB, and Dr. Rafi from CSUSB. Thank you, Shang. So I'm just I'm going to give an overview of what we'll be talking about today with our research. We're going to, I'm going to first start off with an introduction of what we studied and why we studied it. Then Preston's going to go over some of the data that we needed and tools that we used for our studies. And then followed by that, he will also look at how we quantified public transit equity, what research we did, what analysis we did, and what our results were. And then Shang is going to look at what we're currently studying right now. So to go over the introduction, first we're going to talk about the conference paper that we've done. The topic of this was shifts in public transit equity during the COVID-19 pandemic, a case study at Riverside, California. And this paper was accepted for the International Conference on Transportation and Development that's um, held by the American Society of Civil Engineers. So we're looking at presenting this in early June there. So I'm gonna go over why we did this study, who we did the study on, what is the study about, where we did it, and when is the time frame we did the study. So starting off with our why. So we started our research here during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the topic of the effects of the pandemic was really relevant to us and we wanted to see how it's affecting the community around us. Then we also looked at the public transportation industry and some of the priority goals. So looking at the California Transportation Plan, for example, we saw this topic of public transit equity for their goals for 2040 and repeated again in 2050. So we were really interested in discuss looking at this topic more and how the pandemic would have maybe affected it. So we looked at doing a disadvantage index in order to quantify this and seeing how different groups were affected over this time period. We wanted to also look at an area that had continued growth. So for this, we looked at Riverside um, as it's one of the largest growing counties in population in the, in the um, state. So just looking at a little time period of how this began. So we're looking at the population increase of Riverside. It increased over 200% between 1980 and 2020. And then again, um, recently, it's been continuing to grow over 10% between 2010 and 2020. So then the COVID-19 pandemic came and the first case in January 6 came to North America, and this caused a disrupt in the industry. Just three months later, we saw ridership drop by about 90% across North America. And one month later, RTA, Riverside Transit Agency, cut their schedule in half and reduced to a Sunday schedule. And so we wanted to see what effect this had on the community. And the cases continued to peak all the way through February, 2021. So this was over a long period of time that this affected the community. So looking at who we studied, we were looking specifically at disadvantaged communities, and this can be defined in, as I said before, in many different ways. The indicators that we used for this was income level, 
education level and poverty level. And from this, we had done literature reviews on different studies that were done of the pandemic of transit equity and different indicators that were used. And from that, that's where we developed our methodology here. For the data, we use the average income, education and poverty for census tracts. So this is per 4,000 um, persons to give an idea of how big this is. Here we can see the state of California in red. Then further on, we can see this is considered a county in California. And then further down a smaller area would be the census tract. There's even smaller areas of blocks and block groups. But for our study, um, the census tracts was the best, um, best method of data for us. Moving on to what we studied. So this is public transit equity. And there's many different aspects of e equity. What we looked at specifically was job accessibility and service frequency for advantaged and disadvantaged populations, which we defined by using an index that we'll go over later on. So looking at um, the communities, um, both advantaged and disadvantaged, and how they were able to access jobs before and after the pandemic, if that changed in the frequency that they were able to access these jobs. Um, for this, the frequency would help would define what type of jobs they were able to go to, what time frame. If it was once and only one trip per day, if it was five trips per day, would limit them in what areas they were able to access. So these um, were important factors for us. So the area that we were looking at was Riverside County. So for this, we looked at specifically at Riverside Transit Agency, which services the western portion of Riverside County. Just for a snapshot, the population is 2.4 million people in Riverside County, and RTA serves about 1 million of this, um, of this population, which, is, which covers a 2,500 square mile radius, just to give an idea of the area that we're talking about. So when, so we're looking at the COVID-19 pandemic. So for this, we studied two time periods, one that we considered pre-pandemic, which we did as of data of January, 2020, and then what we considered a recovery period. And we defined this as when vaccin vaccinations rolled out and the area started to open back up um, and restrictions were lifted. So we used the time period of July, 2021. So moving on, we're gonna look at what data we needed in order to do this analysis. And I'll pass it off to Preston to do this. Hello everyone. Um, so yeah, like Holly said, I'm gonna be going over the data that we used. Um, the tools that we used, and then how we used those data and tools in conjunction with each other to um, quantify public transit equity. So the first major source of data that we needed was information about the public transportation system in question, which is the Riverside Transit Agency. Um, we use something called the General Transit Feed Specification, or GTFS for short. This is open source data that's published by transportation agencies, and it's updated usually every few months um, and it basically gives a snapshot of what the public transportation system looks like at any given time. So the cool thing about this is that we can look at historical data. Um, so data that's already been posted in the past um, to look at those time periods of before the pandemic and after the pandemic. Um, you can see some required files here. Um, they include stops, routes, and trips. And this is really important for mapping out the transit system and um, getting data from that. The next major source of data we looked at was census data. Um, you would typically, typically go to the census.gov website to gather this data. However, we ended up using the ESRI database a lot more. Um, ESRI, for those of you who don't know, is a geographical information system company. They make ArcGIS Pro, which is really useful software. Um, and they provide census data in the form of shape files and other file formats that make it really easy to work with inside of their software. So we ended up using that a lot. Um, this is where we gathered those indi um, indicators for disadvantaged communities, um, median income, education level, and poverty level. And we also um, gathered additional data from the S3 database that we also use to help the, uh, help the analysis. So the tools that we used, um, like I mentioned, we used ArcGIS Pro. Um, this allows us to analyze the data and visualize it um, and also work with it in a table format um, and calculate certain things. So just as an example here, I have a screenshot of um, four bus stops in ArcGIS Pro that we mapped out. And this pink area surrounding each bus stop is actually the walking 
um, radius. So how far can you walk within 15 minutes of any bus stop? Um, so that's just a little example of what you can do in ArcGIS Pro. And this is what we're gonna be using for our analysis. So how did we actually use the data and tools to quantify public transit equity? Well, the first thing that we wanted to look at, again, was identifying those disadvantaged communities. Um, we developed that disadvantage index that Holly talked about using indicators of poverty, income, and education. We were able to break down the population of Riverside County into five groups from most advantaged to least advantaged based on these indicators where the most advantaged communities had lower poverty um, and higher income and higher education, where the least advantaged communities had um, higher poverty, lower income, and lower education levels. Um, so you can see here, um, these are all the census tracts um, in a portion of Riverside County, mostly Western Riverside County. Um, the darker blue regions are more disadvantaged um, communities and the lighter shaded regions are the more, uh, more advantaged communities. And then here we have a pie chart sort of breaking down these five groups. Um, so again, index group one would be the most advantaged population and index group five would be the least advantaged population. Um, you can see here that the most advantaged population only takes up about 7% of the population, um, whereas uh, the least advantaged group takes up about 33% of the population. And for our analysis, we're actually going to be comparing index groups one and five, so the most advantaged to the least advantaged. Um, so yeah. Um, the next part is we're going to look at job accessibility using commute time. Um, so this, again, was one of our indicators for um, actually quantifying public transit equity. Uh, we want to see how many jobs you can access if you're living in a disadvantaged community um, using a 30-minute commute time um, compared to if you're in a more advantaged community um, using a 30-minute commute time. So here we have that same disadvantaged index map. And this pink area is showing the 30-minute commute service area. Um, this is actually specifically showing the area that you can areas that you can reach um, if you are living in a disadvantaged census tract. So if you're starting your day living in a disadvantaged census tract, which like which areas can you reach within the county? And also, um, how many jobs can you access within this area? And we actually have some pretty interesting results. You can see with these percent changes um, from before the pandemic to during the pandemic. Um, the least advantaged communities could actually access more jobs um, after the pandemic had started versus, um, yeah, before the pandemic. Um, the most advantaged communities um, actually saw a, de a large decrease in the amount of jobs that they could access um, going from before the pandemic to during the pandemic. And um, in total, there was um, a mild decrease of about 3% in the total job accessibility. Um, the next indicator here is service frequency. So how, how often are buses coming by bus stops? Um, this is usually measured in runs per hour. Um, so here we also have that disadvantaged index map. And all these dots on here are bus stops in the disadvantaged census tracts. Um, green indicates a frequently serviced bus stop, where red indicates a less frequently serviced bus stop. Um, so with a green bus stop, you can you know, see there's about 16 to 20 buses per hour going through that, um, through that bus stop. So looking at these results, um, we see that there's a decrease across the board, but it's important to note here that the least advantaged communities actually had less of a decrease compared to the most advantaged census tracts and also the total decrease um, across the entire transportation system. And so what can we conclude from these results? Well, we saw that the service changes from the RTA seem to assist the most disadvantaged populations. And also based on our literature review, we found that disadvantaged populations are a lot more likely to be dependent on transportation services, uh, public transportation services. Um, and so this is a big win for public transportation mobility um, and public transit equity and also mobility justice um, for these disadvantaged communities. And I'm going to pass it on to Shane to show how we're developing this work further to be more accurate. Thank you, Preston. And I'll be going over the developing work slash ongoing work. So our paper was focused on 
focusing on the supply by using the data from job accessibility to service frequency from the transit agency, which shows us how well they supply the community with their services. But our future and ongoing work will be more focusing on the demand side, which is also the ridership side. Um, so you may ask, how do we estimate the demand? So we are planning on looking into more data on population to narrow down the percentage of the transit dependent population, which means they are mostly relying on using the bus or the metro to get around, get groceries, get to work and all that. And as you can see on, on the graph, uh, the green area represents a walking area from any bus stop within 10 minutes for anyone. So by overlaying it to the census track, we can estimate what percentage of the population has a reasonable access to the bus services, which are all in the green region. And also we are planning on overlaying this layer, the transit gap index to the dis disadvantage index to see how much percentage it overlays and how much percentage of the disadvantage area are actually in the transit gap index area. Next slide, please. And also we are planning on looking into more transit agencies, not only the Riverside Transit Agency, we are also look, we'll be looking into Foothill Transit and Omni Trans, which uh, is covers the whole Southern California region within five counties. Also, we are planning on doing more time periods. Uh, we are splitting the time periods into three, a pre-pandemic, which is September 2019 to May 2020, the peak COVID time period, which is from March 2020 to January 2021, which has um, uh, relatively high COVID cases every day, and a recovery period from May 2021 to January 2022. Since the vaccine are rolling off, people are getting vaccine, people are getting recovered from COVID. So we're splitting time periods into three. And that concludes our presentation. We're open for questions.